Hi, I'm Miss Sarah, and this is At Home Makerspace, where I show you how to make fun projects with things you can find at home. This summer, our library is offering a really fun summer reading program. For more information, be sure to check out the link in the description. Our theme for this summer is Tales and Tales, so we'll be doing all sorts of animal-inspired projects here on Makerspace. This week, our project is inspired by an animal you've probably seen in your backyard. We're talking about birds, of course. Did you know that birds' wings come in all sorts of different shapes and sizes, depending on the kind of flying that bird needs to do? In this video, we'll be learning about four different wing shapes and making paper airplanes inspired by those wing shapes. When you make something that's inspired by something in nature, it's called biomimicry. There are all sorts of examples of biomimicry, so if you'd like to learn more about that, be sure to check out the links in the description. For today's video, all you'll need are some sheets of printer paper, so let's go ahead and get started. The first type of wing we'll explore is the active soaring wing. You can find this wing shape on birds that spend a lot of time at sea, like the seagull. Notice that the seagull's wing shape is long and thin and smooth. This sleek shape is good for gliding smoothly on the ocean breeze. Birds with this wing shape can fly long distances without flapping, but only if the wind is right. The paper airplane design inspired by this wing shape looks like this. Notice the long, thin wings? Here's how to make one. We'll start by folding our paper in half with the long sides together. Sometimes this is called folding the paper hot dog style and make sure it's lined up and then give it a crease and next we're going to open it back up and bring this corner to the middle fold here and this will make a little triangle shape give that a crease then do the same thing on the other side your paper should now look a bit like a sideways house. The next thing we're going to do is make our wings thinner by folding them in again. So once again, bring that corner to the middle fold and give it a crease. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. You'll notice now that our wing shape is quite long and thin. Okay. Fold your paper in half following that line you made earlier. So now it should look like a little triangle. And then we're going to fold the wings down. So we're bringing the top line of our triangle down to meet the bottom and creasing it and then we're doing the same thing on the other side and we'll crease that as well and when we're all done with that we have our finished paper airplane Next, we'll explore the passive soaring wing. This wing shape can be found on larger land birds, like the eagle. Notice that the eagle's wing shape is also long, but much wider than the seagull's wings. It also has feathers sticking out on the sides. This shape helps the eagle to catch a lot of air and soar on columns of hot air called thermals. This wing shape is ideal for larger land birds since it takes a lot less energy to soar than to flap, making it more efficient for large birds. Our paper airplane design, which was inspired by the passive soaring wing, also has broad wings. 
Here's how to make it. Start by folding your paper in half with the long ends together. Once again, this is sometimes called folding your paper hot dog style. Next, go ahead and open your paper back up. Next, you'll want to take the corner and bring it to the middle about one inch down. Like this. You also want to make sure that you're folding all the way down to this corner. So you want your triangle to run the entire length of the paper. Once you like how it looks, go ahead and crease it. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. So bring that corner to meet the other corner. Make sure the triangle goes all the way to the last corner and crease it. Next, on this narrow end, we're going to fold it down about half an inch. Now we're going to continue folding it about eight more times. So fold and crease, fold and crease, and so on. You guys know the drill by now. Each time you roll it, it will be getting thicker and it might also be getting a bit wider than your original half inch. That is absolutely normal. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is fold it in half. And I'm actually folding it in half along that same line, but my fold is going in the opposite direction. I want to make sure that this rolled part is on the outside. Then bring one wing down so that the edge lines up with the bottom of the airplane and crease it. Now flip it over and we're going to do the same thing on the other side. And just a note here, that thick edge may be a little bit harder to fold. That's totally normal if it takes you a couple of tries to get it folded. And with that, our airplane is complete. Now let's explore the high speed wing, which you can find in birds like the peregrine falcon. Notice that the falcon's wing is thin and sleek, like the active soaring wing, but it's not nearly as long. This shape cuts down on drag and allow these birds to fly at high speeds and maintain that speed for a long distance, but they do need to continue flapping. Here is our paper airplane inspired by the high speed wing. Notice how it still has a sleek shape, but it's shorter than the active soaring wing. Here's how you make it. We're going to start by folding our paper in half so the long edges touch. Once again, this can sometimes be called folding the paper hot dog style. And give it a good crease. Now open it back up and we're going to take this short edge and fold it in about two inches. Then give it a crease and unfold it. Now we're going to take that top edge again and fold it down to the crease we just made. So now it should be folded about one inch. Then we're going to fold that in half. So now we have a crease that is about half an inch and I'm just going to roll that over one more time Next, I'm going to grab the corner on the side we rolled and bring it down to the middle so it forms this triangle shape and give it a crease. Once again, it can be tricky to fold things on the thicker side here. Don't worry if you take a little bit of extra time to get the crease when it's thicker on the, the one side. Okay, and now we should have that house shape once again. The next thing I'm going to do is refold halfway with that crease we made at the beginning. 
And then I'm just going to fold the wings down. So I'm bringing the top of the wings down to meet the bottom. And I'm going to crease that as well. Then flip it over and we'll do the exact same thing on the other side. And the final step will be folding the edge of the wing up about half an inch, like so. And of course, we're going to flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. So up about half an inch. All right, now when I unfold it, I want to make sure that the bits on the edge of the wing are sticking straight up like that and the paper airplane is complete. Finally, let's explore the elliptical wing shape, which you have probably seen on the birds in your backyard, like robins or cardinals or crows. Notice that the crow's wings are wide with feathers sticking out on the sides, like the passive soaring wings, but they're not as long. This shape helps crows take off quickly and fly in short bursts of high speed, but the splayed feathers around the edges also create drag, so these birds cannot maintain high speeds for long. These birds must flap hard and flap often to fly. Here is our paper airplane inspired by the elliptical wing. Notice it's short, wide wings. Here's how you make it. We're going to start by folding our paper in half so the long edges touch. Once again, you might call this folding it hot dog style. And we're gonna give that a crease, then open it back up. Next, we're going to take this top corner and bring it to the crease in the middle to form a small triangle and give it a crease and then we'll do the same thing on the other side. Okay, then we're going to take the top of our triangle here and fold it all the way down like this. Make sure to line it up so the point of your triangle is sitting in the middle right there where we have that crease. Okay, the next thing we want to do is bring the corner down till it's about one inch above the tip of our triangle like this. Your paper might be getting a little thick now. Don't worry if it's a little harder to crease. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side, bringing it to that same point about an inch from the tip of our triangle. All right, when that's done, we're going to take the little triangle point and fold it up. This will help hold everything in place. Then we're going to fold it back in half using that crease we made at the very beginning. Next, we're going to open up our wings by lining up the top of the wing with the bottom of our paper, like so, and creasing it. Then we're going to flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. Okay, and when we are all done with that, open the wings up and your paper airplane is complete. Once you've finished making all your paper airplanes, you can head outside to test them out. Now I decided to test which of my designs would fly the farthest. My guess was the designs that were based on the active soaring wing and the passive soaring wing would fly the farthest because birds that have these wing shapes can soar long distances. Let's see if my guesses were right.
So it turns out my guess was only half right. The passive soaring wings flew really far, but the active soaring wings didn't fly so far. Now one guess is that the active soaring wings are designed to fly well in windy weather, and it was a pretty calm day. The passive soaring wings, on the other hand, are designed to catch a lot of air under the broad wings, which makes them better for flying on calm days. When you do this experiment at home, I encourage you to test all of your designs and see which ones fly the farthest for you. Does it make a difference if it's a calm day or a windy day? Have fun experimenting. We hope you enjoyed learning more about birds' wings and making some paper airplanes inspired by them. If you try this project at home, we'd love to see it, so please take a picture and share it with us at the library. You can do so through our Facebook at www.facebook.com FHCPL, through our Instagram, our handle is at FHCPL, or you can send us an email. Our email address is makerspace at finleylibrary.org. Finally, I'd like to say a big thank you to the Audubon Society. This video was based on a lesson about bird wing shapes and paper airplanes that was designed by the Audubon Society, and I'll have a link to their original lesson in the description. Remember to sign up for our summer reading program, and if you've already registered, make sure to log your reading. We hope to see you again soon in a new video. Bye!